this little dude's got me up at 3 in the morning. I think I had like a little nap from 11 to 12. And it's just kind of one of those every half hour. It's just daddy, just restless. I think he's out, out now. I gotta have a smoke, man. Now I gotta try to get to sleep, take another nap for the morning madness and work. Good times. What's up everybody? Good morning. Gosh, last night was brutal. The little guy just must be going through going growing pains and stuff. But dude, I got a little nap in between like probably 11 and 12 and then it was just I'm gonna keep waking up on you dad and the wife works full time so I, I try to eat, I don't know just all, all the time I spent with him he's kind of a daddy's boy anyways but yeah three in the morning then I had to fall asleep I've always had trouble sleeping anyways since I was little it's amazing how many traits they pick up from their parents when, you, when they're your own and you see it. Oh, got that from you, got that from you. But this morning, I got to sleep in, the wife handled it. Getting everybody ready, I woke up. Probably like an hour and a half later than I usually would get up. Because these kids get up at six in the morning, no matter what. We try keeping them up late. Repeatedly, no, they still just wake up early. I mean, we're, we're pretty strict with our sleep routine, anyways. Just part of like me not being able to sleep well, you just keep the routine. It's part of it. But uh, <laughs> little little guy's growing. He was a peanut for so long, just tiny. A little girl, not really that little. She's been in the. 90 something percentile of growth since she was like born. So she's a five year old that looks like a seven year old. It was really tough for her before she could talk good because there was kids that looked younger than her who were talking just fine. She couldn't quite have the words and she was really frustrating for her when she's on the playground or wherever, even at school. Just, and, and then just clumsiness, trying to grow into her paws. Her legs are so long. But that, that, and that was the thing of like this morning, her taking over as that um, relationship breathing thing I was talking about. In and out. Um, when one's down, the other one steps in. When that one's down, the other one steps in. And it works beautifully. I don't know how single parents do it. Or would even want to. I would... I mean, I'm sure they got a lot of family pitching in and everything. Um, we've never had that. It's always just been us. Even though we live with Jaja, she's always been working. My mom and dad still drink quite a bit and all that. And my dad lives far away. My mom lives pretty far away, too. Um, and everybody else is pretty darn busy so it's really just been us gotta hire a sitter if you want a day off and we're kind of picky too on who's watching our kids we don't let just anybody hang out with our kids and, and we we actually try to let them gauge it because <coughs> they can tell at least my kids they can tell when someone's off not like bad guy, good guy, but like if someone's super ungrounded um, and just the little cray cray or being fake or inauthentic, they pick up on it like that. And you, you, you can, you can kind of tell over time because there's people like we'll take family for instance. It's like people that uh, they would normally, you know go, hey, you know, greet, all 
excited and hug and stuff, but if they're off, um, and you can't, as an adult, you know, we, we start taking it for granted, you know, they, people get good at covering it up, they just, they say their pleasantries, they got their pleasantries down, down packed, but, you know, hey, how you doing, I'll, I'll, um, I'll whatever, and, uh, but if you're off-off, if you're super ungrounded and you just, whatever, the kids pick up on it right away. They don't want nothing to do with you. Or even just company that you can tell are in the spirit and people who are just toxic as hell, they pick up on it in a heartbeat. They won't go near them or they'll go right up to them. It's, it's, it's creepy, but it's, it's dead on all the time because then you talk to them, you figure it out. That used to happen to me when I when I um, was practicing, you know, um, health stuff. I would I purposely had a lot of time with these people because you gotta you gotta break down some walls to get to what's actually going on. Otherwise, everybody's just gonna smile and say everything's fine. But then when you when you're sitting there digging. All of a sudden, oh yeah, my cat just died, or my husband just died, or my kid's addicted, or that comes out. You're like, well, generally, if you're going through all that, you're not sitting there being all happy. I have to always remember people are different than me. If I'm having a rough week, I'm going to tell you. If you ask me a question, I'm honest. How are you doing? I'm kind of shitty. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you want to hear about it? Well, if you don't, that's fine. If you if you do, most people if they're on the real they do. They'll commiserate a little bit, but the, the funny thing is, is um, and you see memes like this, but like most people think you know people don't want to hear it. You know your complaints and stuff. Now if you're just whining, yeah, nobody wants to hear it. But if you got stuff going on like life. Um, it's interesting because most people, if they care about other people at all, they do want to hear it. And, um, and then they'll talk about their experiences, but then by the end of the conversation, it's lighter. Everybody is lighter about it. It's not just a dark story. Even if it started off that way. Coming up on a job site, I had to just get up grab my coffee, drop the kids up, excuse me, drop the kids up and go, yeah, I don't know how single parents do it, I mean, I get it, I've been jaded before, I wouldn't, some points, I wouldn't want to deal with trying to find a decent partner, and the work, the self-work it actually takes to attract a decent person, um, because that's what it is, that's why people keep attracting the same old kind of people over and over again it's, it's them they're attracting it and they're attracted to it like when when me and my wife met we actually met online and I was so against even looking but I just became sober so not just I had been sober and I was figuring out um, the dating scenes a little different when you're sober and this was years of experience trying to figure out the dating scene when you're sober because for a while I was still attracting drinkers. They were functional, but you, you'd screen, you know, and you'd screen your, your potential mates and they'd be like, oh yeah, I only, I only drink, you know, on occasion, which is like every night after dinner, like, really? Um, there was lots of that, but both me and my wife, we took a a year off um, before we met each other and did self type work we were doing self work took a year off of dating um, and that is not easy that's that painful stuff I was talking about and um, I was lucky enough though I went on we were on plentyoffish.com and I thought it was just so stupid but I mean it's bored and just I just peruse the profiles um, until I felt, felt ready and she was the first person I actually called um, 
and went on a date with, and then it was a done deal from there. Now, she had to date a couple of people on there and just had bad experiences and whatever. But um, the funny thing about that is, was uh, we were around the same area and been at the same, like, clubs back in the day and everything a lot. Like, we could have easily, easily hooked up years and years beforehand because we were in the same buildings on the same nights doing the same kind of thing but we had never even met back then you know what I mean I mean I, I was I was way too wild for her back then she was though the wife is kind of a goody goody too she was like I gotta explain like weird stuff to her um like whatever the nasty stuff in, in life or whatever and, uh, but she, yeah, we would have met, we could have easily met back then, but we didn't. Um, yeah, I just don't know how people are like, I, I gotta get a partner, man. This is too much. I would so, I would do it because that kids are a, a lot. I know you can kind of groom them to just deal with it and stuff and drop them off at friends and family all the time, but it's just a lot of work and then you run into nights like this and it's kind of funny because you know I called it and this is going to delve into something else but I was telling the wife last night come on go get take a shower I kind of want to try to sleep early today just because I don't want my sleep to get off again because I never know when that kid's going to wake up you know, like I said, it's usually not for that long, but he's got me almost trained to go to bed at midnight now because it's sometime usually between like 11 and 12. And so, and, um, so she did and I, I did get to bed on my general time, like 1040 is usually when I start trying to crash. And, um, and then he did, he woke up and, and. How else did I want to explain this? There's always these things that we say. And my wife, she's real magical with it. Whatever comes out of her mouth seems to seems to manifest. And I think this is why you, you talk to God and not to the world. Because you keep on you putting that your words out into the world. I'm not a very good steward of my words. And I, I've like I am I'm batting a thousand on like I predict kind of what people do and what they're going to do and all this stuff but it's to the point where it's so accurate I'm like and don't I'm probably going to diagnosis for this but I, I'm like am I making most of this happen with my words um you know and Linda will do it too even just yesterday we were talking about when Isaiah was sent home with his he, he threw up at school it was just something he ate but now the new rules are you sneeze you puke you do anything you got to go home for two days and she said we were talking about this a couple days ago and then and she, when we talked about it she said well at least it wasn't like ear what is that foot hand foot mouth that stuff that goes around in little toddler kid stuff and what do you know yesterday there's a sign up hand foot mouth case in the school so be careful and it happens all the time. And that's why I listen to my... I'm way more logical and practical than her. But when she says don't do this, she doesn't have an explanation why. But I just don't do it. Or I try not to. I try to control myself the best I can. Because she's usually dead on. And she does listen to me too. But I just really got to work on stewarding my tongue. Because I am really starting to wonder when I'm predicting at least bad things maybe to switch it to um, good things or, or act as if I'm talking to Jesus about it and let him determine it or ask is this going to happen I got to change something because I'm super good at it and it's just my personality I have that weird um, Myers-Briggs personality that INFJ where like you can creepily read people and predict um, the scientific side of that is you, your, 
the way your brain works is you can consume massive amounts of data and in the back of your head it just crunches it and it spits out an outcome and um, it's like it's pretty dead on it's pretty creepy actually but sometimes I wonder like but do I just even if I get that outcome do I have to say it out loud you know what I mean um, cause I'm sick of half the shit that I'm saying coming true all right, back to the job site. You got to kick this out today. So that's my already dried, solidified baseline. Now I'm just going to template out. It's going to set up without dropping mud underneath the rest of the tiles and measuring of course the ones I got to cut around the edges those are going to be fun under there cut little squares out of there and it's always nice when you know you pop off the baseboards you got a little wiggle room but yeah that's what we're going to get into now all right here's what we're doing for measuring these are loose I'm just setting them out with the spacers. I'm measuring for this one by overlapping this one for my line. And you leave a little bit of a gap. You can always caulk it or shoe it later. But you always got to account for expansion. Contraction and expansion. The house breathes. And I'll take this one out. That's my guy, I'll label him. Put this blank in here just to work down the line. Don't have to bump these too much. I got a lot of uneven ground here, but whatever. So then I'll just mark what we got here. I got a little system I'm doing. This is shower that way. And this will be, I think it's a second. Cause I'm going in a certain pattern I'm not going to come from the door and then kneel on all my freshly mudded tiles. So I'm coming from the back, come from the back of the room towards the front. Pretty good. I didn't film this one. This is a little more complex. <laughs> Alright, time to make some mud. Now I got a little water in there already. Just because this stuff gets dusty. 
can just stir it real quick and it settles the dust a little quicker. We don't do very much at a time. And then it'll change consistency as we well. Laying the tile will get a little thicker and then they don't they don't match right. Just to get it to be the consistency of mud, pretty much. A little thicker than pancake batter. And you stir it and stir it till you see all those little crunchies. You get clumped up stuff. Uh, disappearing and just keeps going. I just want it here. It started drying quick, and it's on the floor, I'm not slapping it on a wall, so it can be a little juicy. Not too juicy, I don't know. So, get her nice and smooth. Like that. Well, the good news is, bam. Yeah, yeah, I know I got the spacers in there sideways. I just didn't want the full quarter inch gaps. You know, I gotta remember, I'm not a specialist in any of these things. I just do all of them. But not too bad, it'll hold. Gotta grout tomorrow. The biz. Daughter came home with hand, foot, and mouth. Yay! I honestly don't know what we're gonna do this winter. You know, they get. There's tons of time off for any sniffle. Winter's coming. They're already ramping up the COVID narrative again. Tests and all that bull. Um, our school was pretty good. It barely shut down at all. Nobody was masking up or anything like that. We, she, our, our kids go to a private Christian preschool. Now Kaya is starting in kindergarten. Super excited, but I am not. So they have the um, little break between, you know, this changing of the school year. That's 10 days, 10 days. That's just the first break. Then you got Thanksgiving. Then you got, oops, someone got a cold or an ear infection. That's two more days. Then you got whatever, teachers, MEA or whatever. Then you got Christmas and New Year's is two more weeks. And whatever else I've forgotten there. I'm like, <laughs> This close to homeschooling. 
The kids love it there though, but I don't know if we can swing it. I can easily swing it if I can work. <laughs> and even if the wife was working from home, she's got to sit there at the desk. She can maybe do that with Kaya, but Isaiah ain't going to handle that for very long. So I don't know what we're going to do. Saga continues. up the uh, good old Benadryls and ibuprofen or Apple or whatever it is. Got myself a little snack. So I guess also the little guy get, needs to get picked up too. <coughs> Excuse me, I was just munching. Whenever I'm burping into the camera, I just munch something. Um, yeah, man. Kaya is one thing because she's five, she can kind of entertain herself, she knows what's going on. Then, at first, the wife said, no, Isaiah's cool. And I don't know if they're just checking everybody and sending them home or what. But he's coming home now too, and I don't know how long they got to stay home with this thing. The last time I heard it was, it was like the Rona, they needed to stay home for a while. Thankfully, they already had next week off and a little bit into the week after that. So if it is a long time, that should be chewed up already by their time off. And usually when, like, Isaiah gets sent home with an earache or something, like, he just got sent home last week or whatever it was, because he threw up, he just ate something funny. He did have an ear infection going on, but he wasn't sick or anything, so the minute he got home, he was hyper, having fun. We could have fun the whole next day. But it's not good, man. I mean, especially this goes on all winter. And it really sucks. I've already been through it a couple times. It's just, just really rough. Anyways, stop griping about that. Gotta get the little guy.